Is the town of Chevy Chase named after the actor or comedian of the same name? Is Chevy Chase named after the town? Well, today we're talking about Chevy Chase, Maryland, and you are going to find out everything. So, this is Living in DC. I'm Melissa Terzis, DC Real Estate Mama, and today we are in Chevy Chase, Maryland. Let's talk about location. Right now I'm in the Chevy Chase Circle, got the beautiful fountain behind me, and you've got all the spokes that go in all different directions, over to Friendship Heights, over to Chevy Chase, over to DC, over to everywhere. You go up to the Beltway, wherever you want, you can do it from here. So we sit on the northwest border of Washington, DC. It's a neighborhood if you're in DC, so check that video out because Chevy Chase in DC is different than Chevy Chase in Maryland. It's very confusing, I know. And when you're on the Maryland side, you're either a town or a CDP, which is a census designated place, if you're on the Montgomery County, Maryland side. What's a CDP? I'm sorry, that is outside the scope of this video. Okay, I know, I'm gonna tell you because apparently I like to hear myself talk anyway. So, a CDP is a counterpart to an incorporated place Incorporated places are self-governing, like cities or towns or villages that you know, you're used to hearing. The boundaries of a CDP can be slightly fluid as they're not legally recognized. So Chevy Chase is comprised of a bunch of sections. So there's the CDP of Chevy Chase, there's the town of Chevy Chase, and then there are five self-governed villages. The village of Chevy Chase, Chevy Chase Section 3, Chevy Chase Section 5, Se Martin's Edition, and then North Chevy Chase. So confusing, I know. Now, the villages all have their own governing boards. To give you an example of how they operate, the village of Chevy Chase, their revenue is half income taxes, 25% property tax, and 25% speeding enforcement. You do not want to drive fast here, they will get you. Uh, the metro is just over the DC line on Wisconsin Avenue at the Friendship Heights stop. So let's talk a little history. Chevy Chase came into an existence thanks to the trolley car, which now offered transportation to downtown. And Chevy Chase is known as a streetcar suburb, both inside and outside the Beltway. Depending which Chevy Chase you're talking about, it's the same. The area was named Chevy Chase, which is spelled a little bit differently than how it is now. A chase being a hunting ground. And that belonged, the hunting ground belonged to Colonel Joseph Belt, who inherited the title to the province of Maryland in 1725 when he was 15. Wow, wow, ladies, he had a whole lot of land. Eh, whatever, it was almost, what, 300 years ago. Anyway, the name ties back to the 1388 battle over a chase in England, which was then memorialized in the Ballad of Chevy Chase. So Nevada Senator Francis Newlands began acquiring land here in the late 1800s. The height of the Gilded Age when post-Civil War reconstruction was in full force and the city was growing by leaps and bounds, Newlands had the foresight to say, hey, trolley car, let's pick up the trolley car suburbs. Now that we have transportation out there, it would be valuable to have land out there. And that's what he did. So he formed the Chevy Chase Land Company, which was a major home builder, building homes along Connecticut Avenue, down from where it intersects with Florida, just north of DuPont Circle, all the way to where Chevy Chase, Maryland is now. The Chevy Chase Land Company also built the man-made Chevy Chase Lake for not only recreational activities, but also for power. The lake no longer exists, but you can see pictures of it on the Chevy Chase Historical Society's website, which is actually quite fascinating. The trolley was across from the lake, which and the lake is now where the 8100 Connecticut Avenue building currently stands. So did you know? Chevy Chase is one of the wealthiest and most highly educated places in the country, and for sure in the DC area. Chevy Chase is home to many prominent DC politicians, famous people, that kind of stuff. It's also the 4-H headquarters, as well as the Geico headquarters. I really love that Geico. And they do too, apparently. I have a client who worked in that building and she said that that gecko is all over the place, like to the point that she said they kind of overdo it. I don't think that's possible though. I love that gecko. So real estate, let's talk real estate. When people set out to live in Chevy Chase, you don't really hear them saying that they need to live in one village over another or that they wanna be in the town over the CDP. People tend to go to Chevy Chase, Maryland to escape the city, but they still want the convenience of the city amenities. So Chevy Chase is very residential with retail along the major corridor of Wisconsin Avenue and then inside the Beltway, Connecticut Avenue, but that's actually the DC side. And then there are some apartments and condos here, mostly high rise communities with many amenities and high ish fees. These buildings have a New York feel to them. Um, I think only New Yorkers and people from San Francisco aren't going to be blown away by the high monthly fees but they cover a lot, usually all your amenities, your you know, front desk staff and, and everything in the building, utilities and all that are normally included. Um, 
So Chevy Chase is mostly houses though. And while you can find a few below 1 million, most of the Chevy Chase housing supply is gonna be a million and up. The current median price is like 1.4 million. But I would still almost say in a way that that changes so rapidly sometimes that you know, a year ago it was lower, it might be higher, it might go back lower. And that's all a function of what houses are being potentially like torn down and rebuilt, turned into four and $5 million houses. That's gonna bring your median up. Then there might be some years where you don't see as much of that activity. It will bring the median back down. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. But your prices, your price is probably gonna start with a one at the very least when you want a house in Chevy Chase. All right, let's talk kids. So. People move here for the schools. Montgomery County schools are highly rated and sought after. Chevy Chase schools are no joke. They're all top rated. You can't go wrong here with public education. Um, close by for fun, inside the Beltway on Connecticut Avenue, you actually have Child's Play, which is an awesome kids and educational store. Uh, you've got Glen Echo Park, which is close by. It's an arts and cultural center. They've got classes and camps. There's Great Falls National Park in Maryland. You also have um, Meadowbrook Park, which has a playground, and they call it Candy Cane City. And you know, you can tell why. It looks like a candy cane. All right, how about food? All right, so surrounded by good food here. You've got Clyde's, which is a local favorite in DC on Wisconsin Avenue. But then there's a lot of hidden gems to know about in both neighboring Chevy Chase DC, as well as Bethesda and Silver Spring. So what Chevy Chase doesn't have in like diverse ethnic food options can be somewhat solved by the parade of food trucks that arrive at lunchtime. They park along Wisconsin Avenue. Martin's Edition also has a little strip of stores and they lay claim to some of the gems of Chevy Chase. They've got a French restaurant there, La Ferme, and of course it was named the most romantic restaurant by Bethesda Magazine in 2016. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Special touches include a country farmhouse decor, a large fireplace, and live piano music. You can sit outside on the covered patio and it's a really nice spot that people really enjoy. Martin's Edition is also home to the Brookville Market, which is a little grocery store. Olympia Cafe, where you can grab some salads, wraps, sandwiches, and Parkway Deli is in Silver Spring. They're a New York City deli and they are famous for their matzo ball soup as well as many other yummy, delicious things. If you want to head to Chevy Chase on the DC side, which is that away, you've got Parthenon, which is one of our family favorites. We're Greek, they're Greek. How can you go wrong? It's delicious. Uh, Mako Bistro, Macon Bistro and Larder, which is well known for its Southern cooking, fresh biscuits, gourmet burgers, and then the Larder side of Macon has supplies that are carry out ready like pickles, cookies, and uh, pies. There's Broad Ranch Market, which is a gourmet deli and grocery store that's inside the line in DC. And that's just a sample. I can't even like get into Bethesda because there's tons and tons of restaurants up there in Bethesda. And we're gonna do a video for Bethesda and we'll cover, highlight a bunch of those. As far as grocery stores, you have pretty much everything. So you have Safeway on Connecticut Avenue that's inside the DC line. You've got Trader Joe's and Whole Foods, Amazon Fresh, McGruder's. I, I don't even know what else you could possibly want. And then there's a giant up in Chevy Chase. You got everything. Uh, how about fun? So, all right, give me $50,000 because that's the initiation fee so that you can hobnob at the exclusive, very private Chevy Chase Country Club in Chevy Chase Village. All right, if you don't have $50,000 and you're looking for something less expense free, then Meadowbrook Park is for you. You can pick up the trails into Rock Creek Park. There are horses and stables. There's Candy Cane City that I was talking about, which is the playground so named because, you know, yum yum, it looks like this, candy canes. And uh, I don't want to talk yet about the fledgling retail scene on Wisconsin Avenue. Stores are like closing up, revamping, starting over. There's big plans for the area, so that's kind of like a stay tuned. It's definitely a work in progress. All right, how about dogs? Are there places in Chevy Chase, Maryland for dogs? Uh-uh. <laughs> and if you know anything about Chevy Chase, Maryland, you know why. Google Chevy Chase Dog Park and let me know how that works out for you. Right, I'm supposed to be the source of information. All right, so here's what happened. In September 2019, the Chevy Chase Village Board voted five to two to dismantle the only dog park Chevy Chase had ever seen. There's a fantastic Washington Post article that you must find, and it starts out with the line, everyone knows there's a problem with chubs, and that is the article you must read. But suffice it to say, they had a dog park, dogs barked, and then it was dismantled, costing the village hundreds of thousands of dollars and many contentious meetings. It was ugly and it was memorialized online where you can read all about it. 
So suffice it to say, if you want dog parks, there are many over the line in DC. You always have the trails in Meadowbrook and Rock Creek Park and Great Falls along the river, which is where you'll see a lot of people hiking and running with their dogs. All right, so let's go back to our original question that we were talking about. Was Chevy Chase the actor named after Chevy Chase, Maryland? The town, the village, any of the villages? Sort of. So Chevy Chase, Maryland was named after the 1388 battle and that was the Battle of Chevy Chase. That happened on the English-Scottish border and a chase was known as a hunting ground. And so Chevy Chase's real last name was Chase. He was born with the last name Chase. His first name's Cornelius, but his grandmother called him Chevy. And the reason that she did was she named him after the Ballad of Chevy Chase, which was written about the battle in 1388, which was about a chase, which is a hunting ground. So like 50-50, who's sort of like Chevy Chase here was named after that battle and Chevy Chase the actor was also in part named after that battle. So a little bit of fun history there that you can take to your happy hours or your parent PTO gatherings or, you know, whatever. Anyway, I am Melissa Terzis. I do videos all about living in DC. I'm DC real estate mama. If you have any questions about Chevy Chase Maryland, Chevy Chase DC, potentially Chevy Chase the actor, because I do love me some old retro Saturday Night Live from the 70s, then my contact info is coming next.